El Kwan is a health tech startup founder, as well as international presenter, speaker, and author. Her recent startup, MedHive, is an award-winning B2B digital marketplace that provides transparent, efficient, and cost-effective sourcing of medical supplies in developing markets. Elle is a business enabler and Asia's go-to expert for healthcare and technology events. She is an alumna of the Women Entre Entrepreneur Development Program by PNG, a founding member of the Singapore Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Exacom member of Asia Pacific Assistive Robotics Association, and an international peace ambassador of the Global Prosperity and Peace Initiative. A health tech startup founder, international B2B event producer, dreamer, a foodie, a mom to three teenage boys and two fur babies that once, by the way, organized Karaoke World Championship Asia. Let's join her as she talks about breaking gender bias in tech, case for women in leadership. Streaming live from Singapore, ladies and gentlemen, El Kwan. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. And, you know, I just want to honor the speakers that have presented before me. You are all fabulous. So let me start by expressing what everyone has witnessed the past two years. That amidst the global pandemic, we have seen the incredible dedication, transformation, and innovation from individuals and organizations. Now, the global women who rule was born out of the pandemic, recognizing and promoting the many talented women and success stories, how women leaders have emerged with impact despite the challenges. So as we celebrate you, our audience, I'd like to thank the organizers, the new channel for having me here. This afternoon, I'll share with you my thoughts on why we women should set our sights on technology and innovation. As a two-time COVID survivor, I've observed that the wave of digital transformation brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic has pushed businesses, economies, and countries to constantly innovate and redefine to stay relevant. New businesses have also emerged. Digital has become a buzzword. We now learn, work, and socialize via the internet. Working and studying via Zoom was unthinkable three years ago. Shopping online, getting your food delivered at a touch of a button, catching movies on Netflix. This is indeed our new normal. Some may still be struggling to adapt to it, but this digital world excites me. Why? Because it's a great time to build a better, more inclusive digital world. And it's a good time to change the current situation of women being underrepresented across the tech industry, especially at leadership levels. Chances are women are also likely paid less than their male counterparts. But before going into that, first, let's have a look at some exciting latest technologies knocking on our doors. In the last five to 10 years, we have seen notable breakthroughs in technology and innovation. Undeniably, technology has made its way into all aspects of our lives. From the evolution of artificial intelligence or AI, robotics, the Internet of Things, 5G to big data and analytics, technology has the capacity and potential to transform everything, revolutionizing the world we are in. Already, we see the rapid rollout of electric autonomous vehicles, the self-driving cars. You know, the sudden price increase of petrol and diesel are forcing people to choose a new driving option. And here you go. In fact, a number of accidents on the road will significantly decrease with this technology. Singapore will phase out internal combustion engine vehicles, those that use petrol, and have all vehicles run on cleaner energy by 2040. Here in Singapore, there is already a large scale multi-agency effort to provide 
charging infrastructure, electrify public vehicles, and upgrade the electrical grid to accommodate the new demand. Next, let's talk about robots. So robots would be another reality that we will live with. Worldwide industrial robots could reach 20 million by 2030. Robot baristas are already commonplace in Singapore, in Dubai. So while robots may not take over the world, we can expect to see more robots in our daily lives. Now, how can I not mention artificial intelligence or AI that is in fact taking over from medical sector to education to entertainment? In fact, I've co-founded an AI powered medical procurement platform called MedHive, which currently serves hospitals and clinics in the Philippines. So if you know any medical or pharma distributor or hospital clinic administrator, tell them about MedHive and how we can help save up to 50% of medical supplies cost. Here's another futuristic term that is going to be common in our lifetime, space travel. Space travel will become a reality. It's real, it's developing fast, and it might look like international travel back in the 70s where few can afford it, but it will increasingly become affordable in time. So watch out for that opportunity. Those who have Alexa or uh, Google Nest would be familiar with IoT. This is the Internet of Things. These are systems of uh, sensors and devices which talk to the cloud through some kind of connectivity. So this is a growing system of billions of devices or things worldwide that connect to the internet and to each other through wireless networks. IoT is used from smart homes to control your lighting or air con temperature to medical treatments to improving yields in farming. Now my current favorite is VR, AR, MR. So these are artificial, uh, um, sorry, v um, VR. Remember the Pokemon cra craze a few years back? Uh, me and my son used to play that, and it was such a big thing in Singapore. But that was just a foretaste. Extended reality, or XR, is a term referring to all real and virtual combined environments and human-machine interactions generated by computer technology and wearables. Have you heard of the term metaverse? It has suddenly become wildly popular due to Facebook, where we are live streaming now, changing its name to meta. But really, the metaverse is a rich virtual space where people can work, play, shop, socialize. In short, do all the things that human beings like to do together in real life, but we are now blurring the lines between physical and digital worlds. So let's stop and think about that. We are blurring the lines between physical and digital world. What does that mean to you and me? It means new skills are needed. It means new businesses must be built. And more importantly, it means countless new opportunities are present for you and me. Now is the best time to energize, engage, elevate your involvement in technology. Get into tech, get into innovation, because everything is changing. And if you don't run with the changing times, you will be left behind. Here's a reality. What's been taught in schools currently is no longer enough to equip the next generation. Now we, we need to do, we need to move in order to know what needs to be done. Professors in universities are learning AI, blockchain, while some interested young people are already coding and building AI infrastructure. So, there may be an obvious crisis brought about by the pandemic, but there's also a digital skills crisis. A look back in history will reveal the numerous ways that crises have offered 
unexpected benefits for societies, countries, and humanity. Today, technology has made our lives easier, faster, better, and more fun. But it is set to further redefine our future. It doesn't stop here. We've heard of the phrase, necessity is the mother of invention, and often a crisis acts as the forcing mechanism to compel innovation. And this leads to rapid advances. Let's take the lockdowns, for example. Remember, during lockdown, suddenly there's a lot of FB selling, many delivery options, and almost everyone is working remote. We have innovated. And then try to look around. Most of these innovations are women-led. Why? It's because women have this instinctive key to unlocking growth in the midst of crisis. We are gifted to see potential. But remember, seeing the opportunities emerging from a crisis is not the same as being able to seize them. So we must do. You must do. You must move, not just watch. And this is where women excel. We are flexible. We are resourceful. We are patient. When life throws you curveballs, you know, those things that you didn't expect, failures and disappointments, frustrations from events that turn out to be less fulfilling than we imagined, do we ever stop? We may cry for a while, but women somehow manage to turn lemons into lemonade. We make things work. And if you're in business or working to build a career, this virtue is extremely useful as we face rapid changes, whether that's in customer behavior or government policies like lockdowns. So second point, women are resourceful. And this is very true for the Filipina woman. We don't wait to be fed. We have our own hustle. Who usually solves the problem when there is no food on the table? Women magically turn entrepreneurial. We are suddenly able to sell something or get someone to sign up for some insurance or, or, or even a network marketing program. That's our hustle. And we are very good at that. We are very resourceful. Now, the last uh, virtue I'd like to highlight is that women are patient. And for moms out there, waiting for nine months to carry your baby in your womb is not easy. But we make it look easy. And I'm sure every woman watching will have her own story of how patient and long-suffering you've been as an employee, as a wife, as a mother, as a friend, as a daughter. You've been patient as a woman. Women have that innate rapid problem-solving skills, and we are innovative. Ma'abilidad tayo. And these are the kinds of leaders that today's businesses need. Businesses can gain long-term advantages by understanding shifts and opportunities that are presented. And listening, and this is another woman superpower, listening and understanding usually precedes superior growth and performance after a crisis. So this is my invitation and challenge to you, dear friends. Become leaders in technology-led initiatives. This could be in a business, it could be in a nonprofit, it could be a project in your workplace. Let's also encourage young women to pursue careers in the field that I just mentioned, you know, AI, IoT, robotics. We need to start enabling young women to become innovators and leaders and create a new cycle of mentors and role models for all coming generations to follow. Let us be and let us raise impactful, influential, and inspiring women leaders. Now, I'm going to give you some assignments, homework, which is really easy. Why, you may ask, is this lady asking us to do something? It's because I want to help you in facing the challenge I just posed. You have so much power in your hands, your phone, your tablet, 
your laptop, your gadget connected to the internet gives you access to so much information. So first assignment, find out how you can get in on the data and AI metaverse explosion. Then find answers to questions like, how can I start my journey in the technology industry? What are the right tools and platforms I need to ensure my company or business keep up with the latest trends? How can I balance my need to upskill and equip myself with these tools with my other roles as mom, as daughter, as wife? Who can I ask help from? You know, this last question has somehow been answered and addressed by this event that you are witnessing, the Global Women Who Rule. We have a community that does support and seek to empower women. So find out how you can reach out to and learn from the amazing women speakers this afternoon. These questions can help you start your journey into becoming an impactful woman tech leader. I hope you got inspired today and ready to blaze the trail. We often hear the word trailblazer. It's really creating your own trail or road, trying something that hasn't been done. It's not going to be easy, but the rewards are massive. My name is El Kwan, founder of health tech startup MedHive, inviting you all to start your journey today. Thank you.